hence the issue that we're talking about this morning, this concern that uh, we're not prepared in a security sense uh, for this election. Yeah, that's right. And it's twofold, really, Robbie. It's not just the, the spectre of i-voting, voting online, but it's also the security of the data as well. Like, people can hack right. into the Electoral Commission site, right, and get potentially the electoral roll. And they're simply non-compliant with the government's own cyber security standards because poor old Commissioner Schmidt, who was just exasperated when we were questioning him on Friday, can't get the money to bring them up to speed. And he's been telling them for, it's been two years now that he's been asking for this money so he can bring it up to scratch. And we're, talk we're and talking about $22 million here, are we? 22 is the amount that's been identified that he needs, yes, to bring yeah. it up to scratch. And I, I actually specifically asked him on Friday, I said, Mr Schmidt, if you were to get the, if Perrottet were to sit down with you tomorrow and give you the 22 million, would you be able to comply? And he said, not now, it's too late. I mean, but, you know, it's 4th of December, it's less than, less than a month away. Well, this so is... So actually, that's left it insecure. Well, this is extremely worrying if I'm planning to uh, make an, you know, partake in electronic voting. I mean, that my details aren't secure. Yeah, and the way he explained it was really interesting. So what they, they do these opportunistic attacks where they have, like, automated, you know, they have this automated uh, software, uh, pe soft that tries to penetrate the, the mm. security walls of the system. And if you're weak they find a vulnerability and, and, you know, the metaphor Mr Smith used was knock the door down, so to speak. So it's not like you can guarantee every government institution is infallible, but unless you bring it up to speed, you become the weak link and these opportunistic attacks find the weakness. So it's really, really worrying. I mean, he was, as I said, he was flabbergasted, frustrated, and it was really worrying to hear that evidence because people, you know, it's our electoral system you go there on the basis that your data's protected, your vote's secure, and the idea that people would uh, would participate in those elections not having that comfort, I think, mm. beggars belief, you know, particularly with the amount of money that we're seeing wasted on other things. I mean, $22 million is not a lot of money mm -hmm. in the big scheme of things. We have invited the Electoral Commissioner, John Schmidt, uh, to be with us on the program. He's declined the invitation. And we also invited the Minister responsible, Victor Dominello, the Customer Service and Digital Minister, uh, to come on the program too, but he wasn't available. I mean, well, what would you recommend then? You recommend, I mean, you know, I don't suppose you're able to say, you know, don't go and vote electronically, but, I mean, it is a worry. Look, it, it, it's not like it's not like there's gaping holes everywhere and and there's a there's a ninety percent chance of an attack. I'm not suggesting that. What I am suggesting is is that there's been risk analysis done, obviously, in these yeah. government instruments. Right. The well, commission has determined that he needs to bring it up to a certain standard, and he said we can't, we just can't comply. Well, we have we have the quotes from him here. This is from uh, Mr Schmidt, the uh, New South Wales Electoral Commissioner. For at least two annual reports, it's been a very clear statement that we're not compliant with the government's cyber security policy. And he says, uh, he says, while there is probably not a government authority who could hand on heart say they were completely safe from cyber attacks, he went on to say, if there was a state actor who, for whatever reason, decided to target any organisation in New South Wales, there would be a limitation as to how much that could be withstood. So that's out of his mouth. There we go. The risk, though, as you say, is still, uh, despite these concerns, still very low. Well, you know, you've only got to look at what happened earlier in the year with Service New South Wales, right? Mm -hmm. So it happens. Mm -hmm. And we hear of this happening all the time, you know, around the country and internationally as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not like people, it doesn't happen. It's, it's a, it's a possibility. And I just find it, I just find it very frustrating that, again, the government's prepared to waste any amount of money on, you know, broadened grants and trains from overseas that don't work. And when it comes to $22 million to securing your electoral system, it goes into this black box and this poor poor guy's just pushed away time after time. I, 
Yep. I just do not understand the government's priorities. Okay, good. I will thank you very much, Mark. As I say, we're, we the minister responsible has been unavailable, but we'll keep pushing there. Uh, Mark uh, Buttigieg, who is the Labor Upper House MP and a member of the Budgets Estimate Committee. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it.